Okay, let's talk about independence a little bit more. We say that events A and B are independent if and only if the conditional probability of A given event B is exactly equal to the probability of A. So your posterior probability assigned to A in light of the information of the occurrence of B is equal to the prior probability you assign to event A, okay? That means event B has no effect on event A in terms of probabilities, okay? So this is what we call independence. Independence is mutual. So if event A is independent of B, uh, obviously that implies event B is also independent of A. In fact, this you can prove to imply probability of B should be equal to probability of B given A, okay? This is a good exercise. I suggest that you try to prove this. Now, here's an observation based on this definition and the definition of conditional probability, I can combine them. Probability of A equals probability of A given B, which is by definition equal to probability of A intersection B divided by probability of B. Now, when you put this to the other side, what you obtain is this product form. Probability of A intersection B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. So this is the product rule, which you see uh, in a lot of resources. Uh, when two events are independent, the probability that they occur together, which is their intersection, is equal to the product of their individual probabilities, okay? Be careful, this product form applies only when they are independent. In fact, if you have just two events, this product form also implies independence, right? This is one way of checking independence of two events. If this is satisfied, then they are independent. This is not the definition the definition is here, okay? Be careful about this, this is the definition. But this implies this. So this product form is a result of the definition. So you can also use it to check independence, okay? For two events, this product form also implies independence. This is quite convenient, however, when you have more than two events, this is quite important. For more than two events, that's not the case. What does it mean? So if you have events A, B, and C, and you do not know whether they are independent or not, let's say, but you see that the probability of their intersection turns out to be equal to this product. Okay, now this does not guarantee that these three events are independent, okay? When you have two events, that's simple. One implies the other. But when you have more than two, okay, this implication doesn't go both ways. The definition leads to this, but it's not the other way around. When you have the product form satisfied, it does not automatically mean they are independent. In fact, for three events to be independent, they should be, first of all, independent pairwise. A and B must be independent. B and C must be independent. A and C must be independent. But that is not sufficient, okay? A should be, of course, that means A given B equals probability of A, right? A given C should be equal to Again, probability of A and vice versa. And B given C should be equal to probability of B. But these are not sufficient. Probability of A given B and C, okay, should be equal to probability of A. And so on, okay? So proving independence of more than two events is not that simple. But in applications, 
sometimes we just assume independence based on our prior belief or prior information about the random experiment or about the random system. For instance, let's take a random experiment where you throw a die, let's say, assume which is fair, and you also throw a coin, which is also fair. The sample space would be heads one, heads two, etc., up to head six, and then you have tails one, tails two, etc., up to tail six. Okay, a sample space of 12 elements. But you see, there is no reason for one of these experiments to affect the other. The description has no relation, right? It doesn't say if you throw the coin, uh, if, if it is heads, you use this die or something else, okay? There is no physical relation between the die and the coin. So here it is reasonable to assume the two outcomes are independent, okay? So if I ask you to prob the probability that uh, after this, let's say I throw a die and I toss a coin, what is the probability of seeing a six on the die? It is of course one over six. But if I ask you, what is the probability that seeing um, a six on the die, given that the coin was heads. Well, there is no reason to assume the coin affects the die. So it is still one over six, okay? Based on our assumption of the physical description of the random experiment, we can assume these two events are independent, okay? That's one way to look at it. Uh, in terms of mathematics, sometimes you come across two or more events which you have a certain amount of information and if you want to prove whether they are independent or not, this definition is the way to go.